you know, Roshi started the week with talking about this being a somatic practice, so we're somaticizing. So let's just take a minute. We hear a lot about grounding and centering, and probably you all realize it's not just theoretical, but still, people can practice for years and not be closely in touch with their bodies. So grounding is literally grounding. You can feel it, your feet on the floor, just the relaxed but aware contact of the soles of the feet against the floor. The knees bent helps that because of course grounding runs through the whole body. It's not just about the feet. And when the knees lock, it kind of cuts off the natural energy current to the ground. And there is, um, in fact, there's a lot of medical recent research that we should spend some time walking barefoot on ground because there's a measurable, palpable grounding that happens that we often don't get. And uh, I've heard some interesting research recently around how good that is for us. But anyway, even on a carpeted floor or whatever, we can still get some of that sensation of groundedness. And then to add to it is the centeredness, which is also literal and can be developed further and accentuated by working with the hara. And we talked about that feeling of expanding on all sides with the in-breath. That can seem a little odd because of course air isn't going down in the belly. Nonetheless, the which allows the lungs to fill up more. And when we allow that expansion, we make more room for the diaphragm. So there is a natural expansion and we're just, without forcing it, gently encouraging that and noticing many people, even if you've learned abdominal breathing and you're letting go of your belly, it's worth checking to see can I work with expanding my sides? And can I work with expanding in the lower back? And incidentally, that expanding feeling in the lower back is very good for relieving lower back. So, so we have a soccer ball and it extends from the perineum all the way up, really up to about the solar plexus and the horizons of the center. So on the inhale, we expand that. This is very connected with that feeling groundedness too. And on the exhale, we gently try and keep some of that expansion. It can help to really feel if your pelvis has a forward tilt, mine very much does. So many people have that forward tilt. So if that's not the case for you, don't do anything. But if you're aware that it's the case and you have a kind of a excessively swayed lower back and you feel consciously to pull this back a little bit as though you have that tail hanging down from the back. And then thinking of the whole pelvic area as kind of a bowl that holds the bottom part of that ball. Yeah, I know this is very nerdy and technical, but if you can really get your mind down there and pay attention to all this stuff, then it starts to get interesting. Unlike just, I gotta put my mind in my heart, you know? So just remembering that, uh, that image of a flat rock dropping through jello, you know, dropping down till it finds that place it wants to settle. And it's quite a precise point. In fact, there can be value to moving up and down, an inch or two, this is really nerdy, side to side, an inch or two, forward and back, an inch or two internally with the attention to find the spot where it feels most vibrant. And there is like quite a small spot at the very center of what we call the hara that is the most energetic. And you'll feel it the most if you can find that spot. If you can't, don't worry, just put your mind there as best as you can. But you might be surprised if you make that effort to really locate. 
And then it can be accentuated by that mild lifting on the knee, especially in the heat. Um, so enough said, let's start with the knees. All of this preamble is just to say, let's keep paying attention. And that will translate into being able to pay attention to the body as a whole, which will translate to being able to relax the body. And if you experience a lot of pain in sitting, you know, you can't make your practice, you can't allow your practice to be somatic if you're at war with your body. So somehow you've got to make friends, rotate in the other direction, timing it to the breath which means bringing our awareness into it, which usually eases the pain, even though we'd rather get away from the pain. I know this very well, because I have 10 years of the worst pain I've ever experienced in the first sessions. So I learned this stuff out of desperation. Okay, the hips and think again about that pelvic bowl and the tail if you need it. Sometimes people who tip too far backward, in which case, tip a little bit forward. And we should really be able to feel the center of gravity here. I want to do a lot of what we do today on the floor. So I'm going to abbreviate our warm up. Let's go in the other direction. And some of the upper body warm up we're going to do when we get to the floor. Remember always timing breath movements keeps the meditative sense going. and gives us that somatic connection with the body. And we can let that rotation in the pelvis, of course, go down to the knees and the Okay, and let's just do, okay, which is wide legged with feet parallel, but spread more widely. and hands on hips. And let's just do, it's easier to show than describe, just some of these. Bending one knee, bending the other, letting the hips and pelvis rock side to side. And any variation of this that feels good to you. And of course, if you have any issues, Please take it easy. Or if your knees are just very sore, this could be a mild bed. And you might try that core engagement of bringing the, pulling the navel back toward the spine, which also helps us be more aware of that region, but it tends to flatten out the lower back, which can feel really good. It's a kind of stretch for the lower back. It's hard to get any other way. Okay, and let's just do a simple forward bend from here. And unless you're accustomed to this, I would again walk the hands down the legs to support the back. If you're accustomed to it, you can just do what you did. Um, your hands can stop on the thigh, just above the knee. I wouldn't recommend putting the weight on the knee. If you go lower than that, I'd put your hands onto the shin and as far down as you want to go. Or if it feels okay, and it's okay to keep the knees bent as much as you need to, if it feels okay, it would be nice to fold the arms and just swing and sway a little bit. 
And also, we might put some of that move into it that we were just doing as much as good still. And we're not going to do so much next step today, but we can always shake up the neck with doing this gently, but just the weight of the head will release a lot. And if you find a spot that really wants to stretch, like on one side, just feel free to pause there and breathe a few breaths. And then the other side. Don't worry about your flexibility. Every little bit is a game. When I first started doing this stuff, I first started sitting Zen, I couldn't get my knees anywhere near the mat. And if I did a forward bend, my hands would come just below my knees. That's as far down to the floor as I could get. So every little bit released some of that tension. So I want us to get to the floor through a forward bend. But uh, because we'll be doing some work on the knees, if your knees are sensitive, you might want to get a zabuton or one of the little flat pillows or something else to put under the knees. And I'd suggest you grab a zafo and have it nearby because we're going to do some stuff in says the position. So um, just have them within reach. We're just going to start with our usual cat cow with some variations, but. If you know your knees are sensitive to pressure, you might want to put the uh, whatever cushioning you found under the knees. On. So right now we're sitting like this and we're gonna come down to all fours. And for cat cow today, let's take a minute and connect to the hara in this position. Because it's our center of gravity, it makes sense to enact movement from that center. And also when we're moving, it makes it easier to feel that. But for starters, let's let ourselves sink between the shoulder blades. It's like a slump between the shoulder blades, but it's an anti-slump because we always come from the other direction. And take a breath. This has put us into some version of the cow position. And now as we exhale, let's go slowly and see if we can, starting the movement from the hara, really feel almost one vertebra at a time as we come up and back and see if there's any area that we can particularly accentuate. Like for instance, the lower back in cat. If we're not careful, the whole thing would go into our progressive upper back. Because that's how we bend it over the computer and the steering wheel and everything. But if we get aware, noticing again that's behind the hearts, that's in region, if we put our awareness there, we may find that we can really get a nice stretch at the lower back. And then slowly into cow. Of course, usually we inhale here and exhale on the cat, but when we're taking more time, we might need a few breaths. When we come down here, it's easy to get a curve in the lower back. It takes a little more awareness to get it between the shoulder blades. But that's usually where we need it the most to get that thoracic curve a little straightened down. I have a congenital curve there that is never going to be perfectly straight. So this is something I have to work all day. And then being aware of the neck, what feels good for the neck. Does it feel good to look up? Does it feel better to look down, even to bend it way forward? Or you could even, well, we're including it in this movement anyway, to go back to the repetitive movement, breath by breath. But how far do we take the neck into movement? It's a matter of mind. A few more of these. So, and then 
I want this to come back to neutral and we're gonna do a pose called puppy dog. And for this, we are up in tabletop like this. So we're gonna walk our hands forward and we're gonna drop our hips back some and let our chest drop between our extended arms. And you can play with that. Probably your head won't make it all the way to the floor. We're not going as low as we do in child space. But that's okay, because this is a stretch for the front of the shoulders, the front of the thoracic, between the shoulder blades. Allow that thoracic anti slump again. The shoulder blades come together almost as though they're in the tension. And just find the resting place and breathe. And remember that relaxation is going from the exhale. So we exhale, then we let the shoulders go a little more. Let the lower back and hips go a little more. Let the whole extension of the entire spine go a little further. Stretch out. Breathing from the belly. Breath in the belly, not in the There's a sensation sometimes to hold the breath, and that's very important to test it. So, above all else, keep the breath in. If you need to come out early, please do. And you might find if you come out of it that you can do some of those butt revolutions. If you rise up a little bit, you might not feel good. Again, awareness of lower back. Helping the pelvis one way or another may give us that stretch before lower back is completely. And then the other direction. And the main thing is, if you manage to release the shoulders some, as we come up into other positions, Let's not let that tension feed back into them. It's not necessary. So uh, I think I said you folks the revolution. And now let's just go back for a moment to a full child's pose. Knees come wide, ankles come, uh, I'm sorry, heels come together, and stretch out front. And we're going down as much as it's comfortable, perhaps all the way to the floor. If your forehead doesn't want to go to the floor, this is a good use for that doctor. You can pop your head on the doctor. The object in child's child play things and let go. It's completely in between. If it feels good, you can tense your fingers like that. At least at the beginning, because that brings the shoulders further back. And again, gives a stretch to the end. And a length thing, especially as the sacrum goes back, the rest close to or upon the heel. And you find that spot, relax into your knee. As we exhale, let it go around. As we inhale, bring the attention to the study of your breath, any place it feels stuck, and exhale. Releasing that way. Couple more breaths, no hurry. I want to do a couple lunges. These are a little more challenging, but there's a number of variations which I'll give us. It's tricky to work with the camera so you can really see what's what. Let's see what we can do about that. Okay. 
So you probably stole the table top. What we're going to do is step forward with, let's say, the left foot. So it's going to be like this for starters. Hands are on either side of the foot. If that's hard for you, you can put them up on fists. If that really doesn't work, or if you just want to, you can come up with your hands on the knee like that. In fact, that's one of the first variations, but having the hands down is usually easier. So you can hands reach the floor and do that. And then we're going to walk the back knee further back. The back foot, it's flat on the floor because it's been to the back wall. And we're walking back with the back knee and maybe a little forward with the front knee until we feel a good stretch in both hips. And then our job is simply to breathe. And use those exhales to release. You can carry this any way you need to do it. You should feel a stretch in both hips. Of course, it's a different stretch. If you wish to come up, sometimes that's helpful to put your point to put forearms on the front knee. And then if you put some weight into the front knee, that accentuates the stretch. It's completely optional. But you might find that it stretches a little bit differently. And that might feel good. If you want to, you can even bring your arms up into an upward reach. That's entirely optional. Or your hands on the knee. Just experiment, but if you just want to keep your hands on the mat the whole time, it's perfectly good. Okay, and we're going to step back. It's good to time these transitions with breath too. For instance, I just exhale. Take a breath here at tabletop. Maybe two breaths. Step forward on the other side. Same feel. Hands, fists, hands on the knees. Whatever feels good, breathing. Without breath. The release is unlikely to happen. So be sure to breathe and breathe deeply. You may find that you can make the stretch a little wider after a few breaths. Just experiment, whatever feels good. Okay, let's slowly come out of it. On the next sail, I should say that for here. But if you're really in tune with your breath, you'll know what feels good as far as timing with the breath. Okay, here's where you might want your zafu. You don't have to have your zafu, but we're going to kneel in seiza. And it's fine to kneel on the zafu if that helps. So, Says the position. And we're going to do these movements we've been doing standing. But please put this up right under your butt if you need the support. Or if this doesn't work for you at all, you can do this kneeling like so if that works for you. Okay. And so we're going to do an upward reach as we always do standing, inhaling up, reaching up, lifting the chest. If a little back bend feels good, if it feels good to point the head upward, we'll find that from this position, it feels a little different. Can we bring the shoulder blades together? Remember to breathe. We're just holding it for a couple of breaths. If you're just looking forward and there's no back bending, 
which should come from the thoracic upper back. That's fine too, just whatever feels good. And the next time we're going to bring them back. This time we're going to interlock our fingers as we've done before and stretch upward. I know I can't get the whole thing in the camera, but we've been doing this. So we're just going to stretch straight up. The object is the length of the spine. You may find putting that tail on the pelvis, tilt the pelvis a little down behind posteriorly may help extend the back. Look up if you wish, lift the chest some, whatever's comfortable, breathe. If you want to put a little back bend in, that comes from the thoracic upper back. We're not going to go to the side this time. When we're ready, we just release. Let's shake out the hands a little bit. We're going to do something a little different, which is we're going to put the hands behind the head. And this is a different way of getting that similar feeling of opening the chest, bringing the shoulder blades together, looking up, extending the neck, if that's good for your neck, lifting the chest, feeling that in the thoracic, this is too much, don't do it. Pulling the navel back towards the spine. A few breaths here. And coming back to neutral, take a breath. Now we're gonna do side bends from here. So begin with an inhale and an exhale. I'm gonna go over to the side like that. If you need to put a palm down to make it work or to get a better stretch, you can ex extend this arm if you like, or you can just stay like this, whatever feels good for you. And then we're coming back to neutral and of course we're gonna do the other side. Really feeling that stretch across part of the, the side that's extended with all with the ribs. You might really feel the breath going into the ribs, stretching a little bit. Do whatever feels good. Extend your arm if you wish. Put the other hand on the ground if you wish. Really. If you like to twist a little bit towards the ceiling, that's good too. Are you ready, release. So we'll also do a little bit of a twist from here. We're getting close to finishing. So take a breath and we're gonna take one hand and put it across with the palm facing out. We're just gonna do a gentle turn with the spine erect to the side that the hand, both hands are on, the other hand is behind you. Twist, breathe. Release, good by there. Coming back. You might want to bend forward in between. And then the other side. Either this is most of the twist is coming from the upper back. We're breathing. If the breathing gets too tight, we're probably going too far. We're staying upright as much as we can. And for relaxing today, since we're about out of time, we're just going to take a minute and do child's pose. With knees together, if that's okay for your body, you can also part them like we did before, if you prefer. And just on an exhale, just let yourself flop down. And just let gravity take all the muscles, all the skin, the bones.
let the skin dissolve off the muscles, muscles dissolve off the bones, bones dissolve into the earth. Let him go. Using the exhale. Remembering the heart. And just one, come back up, walk with your hands, if that makes sense. And thank you very much. I'll see you in the Zendar. <laughs>